Hey there, this InDesign lesson is part of an in-depth course on learning and mastering InDesign. These are a few of my university students' magazines. After learning from this tutorial, learn even more about creating effective editorial and promotional content by clicking on the discount coupon in the description. Start designing and selling online books, magazines, and more. Thanks, and we'll see you in the course. When creating a poster or feature story layout in a publication, uh, consider the images you'll be using. If there's a set amount of text to be used, we do need to calculate how many photos we'll be using, how large they'll be, where they'll be placed in relation to the text and other elements on the page like illustrations and so on. Let's get started placing images into a document. Let's open a new document first. So go to File, New, Document. Let's make it four pages for this example. And I'm going to navigate down to the two page spread here, pages two and three. And to place an image into a document, just go to File, Place. And from the support files, let's choose this picture of the bear here and click open. Notice we have replace selected item selected. That doesn't matter now because nothing is selected. But if you did have something selected on the pasteboard or on the document and that was checked, then it would place that photo into that frame. So I'll show you later what that means. So we can uncheck that. It doesn't matter. So hit open. Notice that the cursor turns into a thumbnail preview of the image. So I can just click and let go and that places it. Now notice uh, maybe it's not as tech sharp as we'd like as the original photo. It would print out fine on a PDF or printing, but maybe we want the preview to be a little bit better. So right click over it and then we want to go to display performance at the bottom and high quality display. And this takes up more processor memory, but I have a newer computer so it should be fine. And unless it's a super, super high resolution photo that's very large, and you're resizing it down, it should be fine. It shouldn't uh, make your workflow slow down at all. Now you notice we placed this in by just clicking. Now it's best practices not to make it larger than the original file size. So if I wanted to make this larger than this, it might start to pixelate. You can always make a photo smaller. You can make it smaller in Photoshop. You can make it smaller in InDesign. It will resample down and it should look fine. But if we make it larger than the original, as if we just click and let go, then there is a potential for it to pixelate because we're stretching out the pixels. Now you'll notice once I've placed this in here, you can click and drag it around with the black arrow up at the top. That's the selection tool. If you hover in the middle though, it turns into this hand, right? So be careful. If you hover in the middle and click and drag, you're moving that photo around inside the frame. All right, so it starts to crop out. You'll notice here the edge of the image frame is different from the edge of the photo. By default, they're aligned right along the edge there, but if you hover in the middle, it will move it around inside that frame. So it starts to crop out. So I'll do edit, undo. If you choose the direct selection tool, that white arrow, it will always do that. No matter where you're uh, hovering over on the photo, it's gonna move it around inside that frame. So what if you wanted to resize this photo, make it smaller? Let's say we just wanna put it over here. Well, if you click and drag with the black arrow, the selection tool, uh, the corner, it just crops out. So what we need to do is hold control on the PC or command on the Mac and click and drag, and that resizes it. You'll notice though it's pretty easy to, to distort it. So in addition to holding control, I want to also hold shift. So control and shift or command shift on the Mac click and drag, and we'll be able to resize that. Now I mentioned replace selected. Let's just say I draw a rectangle out here, or I have a photo out here selected. Now that's selected. And I go to file place, and I choose another photo, and have replace selected item selected, and click open. It will actually embed it into that shape. And of course this is a little bit too large for that. So what we would do is use the white arrow, and we can resize it in there. And we'd want to hold shift to maintain the correct proportion. You could zoom out by control or command minus uh, if it was really large. But So you kind of see how that works. If we go to view, display performance, do high quality, it should make all the photos high quality there. So, And you can embed photos not into just rectangles and squares. We can draw custom shapes out with the pen tool. We can draw 
ellipses, polygons. We can bring over other shapes from Illustrator and paste them in or place them in and embed photos into it as well. And if you have the selection tool selected and click and drag in the middle, again, it's going to just move it around in that frame. So just be careful to click and drag it somewhere around this, around the center, not on the center. If we click and drag the left or right or top or bottom, it will crop out. Unless we hold control again, then we can resize it. If you choose the direct selection tool, that white arrow, and then if you click and drag on a corner here, it doesn't resize it or crop out in the normal way that a selection tool would. It actually just moves that point. So it's treating it like an illustration almost. It moves that point, and can we move that path to give it a different shape. So that's pretty cool. So that's the basics of placing a photo, moving them around, cropping out, and resizing them. Let's just say we wanted to insert a group of photos though. So what we can do is go to file and then place and I'm just going to choose a couple of these. I'm hold control on the PC or command on the Mac. Choose a couple of those and then click open. You notice it says the number four there and if I click and drag that's another way to insert them or just click. It will insert that kind of moped photo but let's just say I wanted to insert another one first. That's easy. Just press left or right on the keyboard, left arrow, right arrow, and we will toggle through that group of four photos. So I should say we want to place this one first, then we could click and drag it, and then we have this one. Let's just say we want to place this one, click and let go, click and let go, or click and drag. If we click and drag and it's a larger area than the original photo, then that can become problematic if it gets pixelated, but um, so that's inserting a bunch of photos at once uh, by toggling through them and choosing which ones we want to place next. However, what if we wanted to place a bunch literally at the same time in kind of a grid fashion? Well, to do that, I'm just going to select a couple more. I'm going to hold Shift, click on this one, and then down there and I'll select everything in between, click Open. And it has the previews of the photos, so if we press the left and right arrows, it'll cycle through those, but let's just say we want to place them all at the same time. Hold control on the PC or command on the Mac as well as shift and it turns into that grid icon on the cursor. Then click and drag and it will place them all in sort of a grid pattern. Now let's just say we wanted to place, instead of just JPEGs, we wanted to place a PSD file and we wanted it to be partially transparent or show only certain layers. If we go to file place and then choose one of these PSD files, let's just say uh, the food 2 and then make sure show import options is selected. I'm going to uncheck replace selected item. So show import options, open, and now it gives us these options now. So you'll notice we've got different layers in here and you can toggle the visibility of the different layers. So let's just say we wanted this plate of food placed, but we don't want that background there. Uncheck background, and then it toggles it. So in the Photoshop file, it has all these layers here, and you uncheck background. Then when we place it in, it'll place it in without that background, without that one layer. One thing to keep in mind is if you have a shape, like you have a shape over here, let's just say you were adding a background to some feature story or um, some kind of color to a layout and when you go to file place and you place an image in and if you hover over see how it has that little icon with the parentheses on it uh, that means it's going to embed that photo inside this frame so be careful to just click on the pasteboard or the document itself rather than a shape because if you do it will embed it inside that shape and of course we can as usual with a lot of Adobe programs, alt click or option click on the Mac and that will duplicate the photo. So that's the basics of placing and resizing formatting images in InDesign. In the next lecture we're going to be going over resizing, rotating using the control panel, uh, setting the reference point, as well as uh, customizing the fitting frame options so that photos can be uh, fitted to frames by default.